Hey everybody, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. I found another old tractor in non-running condition and uh, let's take a look at it. My goal for the day is to see if we can get it started. So we'll do a quick walk around then I'll point out some things that caught my eye. Okay, so starting in the back here, I've got a swinging drawbar, PTO. We've got our foot controlled rear lift assembly. Got your standard seat. This looks like it's got a cracked spring in there, but looks like it's still doing the thing. The brakes actually seem like they might be working. We won't be able to test those completely until we get the tractor rolling. But it feels like there might be something there. Uh, the gear selector works. I can I can engage the gears. The high low selector works. PTO selector works. The clutch handle also works. Uh, we've got some roached out gauges here. I can't tell which is water temperature and which is oil pressure from the front. We can figure that out looking at the back. The ammeter is clearly newer than the other two this here i thought might be the headlight switch but it seems to be stuck so we'll investigate that later if you guys don't know this is the control for the radiator shutters the control knob uh, is still hooked up to a rod that comes up here and it still has the radiator shutters in there but unfortunately the rod is disconnected from the shutters in there so when you turn the knob up on the dash the, uh, the shutters don't move, but uh, at least everything is there and that's something we can probably fix. We've got choke here. And it works. The other thing that you don't see all the time is this tractor still has the fuel valve selector control rod installed and functional. You see right there it says off. And then if you turn it to G, that's gas. And if you turn it to F, I think that just stands for fuel fuel would most likely stand for kerosene or tractor fuel or distillate or something of that nature but this thing is still on and it still seems to work it runs up here to the selector valve and uh, there's actually liquid in both tanks so we're gonna check that out here in just a minute and see what is going on here see if we have uh, gasoline in both tanks or we have some sort of tractor fuel in one and gasoline in the other. In the 12 tractors that I've acquired over the last five years, this is the nicest looking sediment bowl I have ever seen. I have not cleaned this, I haven't touched it. And uh, even that gas looks pretty good, right? So that's curious. Uh, I know it's got some fuel in it because the carburetor leaks. I know it's got some coolant in it because this uh, boot down here leaks. Not much, but there's a couple drips here and there. And here, these brackets are missing a lot of the time, so that's kind of neat that these are still here, even though they're in the way. Um, but look at that spark plug. That is just, that's been in there for a long time. Doesn't look that good from the outside, but we'll see, we'll, we'll take it out and see how it looks on the inside. The compression uh, valves are still present on both sides and they still seem to function. I haven't looked inside the oil bath air filter yet. The engine is free. I can get the engine to spin by turning the fan or by turning the flywheel itself. And I also hear the magneto impulse click, so that's good. Let me show you. It feels like it has compression too. Another thing that is uh, notable on this tractor is that the sheet metal is pretty darn straight. You see that? Even up here, 
all these are straight until you get to right there there's a little bit of a uh, indent and right there there's a dent but that is pretty much it i think all the rest of this stuff is pretty straight and this side here doesn't look like it was ever hit so that is also good news we've got uh, some decent sheet metal going on over here we've, of course we've got an old generator and regulator with some terrible looking wires the fan belt is still present but it's all cracked out can you see that on on the camera See that, that crack right there? I think there's a good chance that um, if and when this thing does fire up, I think this belt might just fly off. I'm gonna leave it on for now and we'll uh, replace it at that point. Somebody's put a uh, toolbox in here. We've got some miscellaneous tools and hardware. We'll uh, go through that in a couple minutes. The exhaust pipe here is still present, but it's a little bit loose for some reason. upper radiator hose is in terrible condition and if we look at the spark plug on this side it looks pretty much like the other one not very good uh, compression valve is fine here looks like this tractor really sat outside for a long time it was kind of neglected it does have the makers plate serial number tag still present right there and I did check the uh, serial number it is confirmed 1946 John Deere model B N Here's the magneto And the one thing that caught my eye is the the magneto is twisted to the right as far as it will go You can see down there. There's no more adjustment on it. And uh, that makes me wonder if the previous owner was having timing issues or or what but that might come up in conversation when we get a little bit deeper into this to see why this is so fully advanced like that. Uh, here's the oil uh, check plug, crankcase breather stack, and lights. We've got a lens on this side, missing lens on that side. Coming back around here to the steering wheel, uh, standard stuff here. We've got an old wooden suicide knob. This throttle control looks like it had a uh, repair. And I don't know if that's JB Weld or what that is, but uh, it seems to work. You can see it's still hooked up there and it's still doing the thing down there by the carburetor. We've still got the original fuel caps and the radiator cap. I don't know if that's original or not. It's a little bit dented in. All right, so let me tell you what I know about this tractor, which isn't very much yet. I bought this on an online auction from a local uh, auction yard that's about 35 minutes from our house. And I've actually gotten two other tractors from that same yard. I got that Ford 960 over there. And I also got that other John Deere B from the same auction house. I paid 850 bucks for it. At this point, I don't know if that was a good deal or if that was uh, way too much money to pay. It will depend on what we find, right? But the only thing in the auction notes that told anything about the tractor was a note from the previous owner that said, tractor will start, but needs to be pull started to start. And when I say pull started, I mean pull started by another tractor or vehicle. The only other thing that the auction note said was new starter installed. And I looked on this and you can see it's looks pretty new and there's a sticker on there it says uh, November of uh, 2022 so that's about a year and a half ago now so that is in fact pretty new and I think these new starters run about 300 bucks so we're ahead of the game right there as far as the starter goes clearly they put a new ground strap on for the uh, negative post on the battery but we've got some issues with the other cables here this is the positive battery cable and it runs down to the uh, solenoid. I don't know if you can see on camera, but that wire is completely corroded. It's barely even hanging on to the post. It's so thin and broken and rusted. So I don't think there's a chance in heck that this positive cable would have had continuity when the battery was hooked up. 
the other thing is that the positive cable that goes to the starter uh, the other end goes to the solenoid this one doesn't look much better it's just this one is a little bit better but it's in bad condition also it's all kind of corroded and rusted on both ends I can spin the flywheel so the motor is free and all the teeth on the flywheel look good so it's not an issue with the flywheel uh, I'm assuming it's not an issue with the starter although the Bendix isn't retracted all the way I, I think it will uh, as soon as the motor fires and the flywheel spins fast so my guess at this point is that the previous owner was chasing a starting issue put a new starter on it put a new negative cable on it but left this old positive cable that's probably not even conducting electricity anymore so that's a bit of a curiosity i wonder if they just didn't think of that or didn't look at it but I'm not even gonna try to run this cable. I'm gonna replace that as well as this one that goes to the starter before I even try to crank it. It very well might be a larger problem with the starting issue, but that's where I'm gonna start. We're gonna replace those cables and put a battery in it and see what happens. But before I do that, let's check the fluids just to make sure it's got some oil and some coolant and see what we got. Let's see if we can get any liquid out of these tanks and see what uh, it might be. That doesn't look like gas, does it? Well, my baster won't reach whatever is in there, so I'm gonna try to siphon some out. Well, that doesn't look like gasoline either. What the heck's going on here? All right, this came out of the rear tank and this came out of the front tank. I guess it could be gasoline with an additive or a stabilizer. But it doesn't, that one doesn't smell like gas. This one smells like gas. Yeah, that's, this is definitely not gasoline. Yeah, this has got kind of an oily component to it, like it's some sort of a, uh, you know, a kerosene or a tractor fuel. I am really surprised. So, if I try to light this one, this one will light instantly if it is gasoline. And if this is not gasoline, like I think, it shouldn't light at all. Let's see what happens. Yep. That's gas. And this shouldn't light. Yep. Who would have thought that in today's day and age somebody would be running kerosene or tractor fuel in the big tank? That just doesn't make sense to me. So it looks like the way these tanks are currently plumbed, the rear tank here with the gasoline in it, there's a uh, hard line coming out of the bottom of it with no filter. And it goes here and it makes a loop and it comes back to the valve and then it goes straight to the carburetor. So the gasoline uh, in this tank is not being filtered in any way. The front tank with that, we'll call it red kerosene for now, that tank comes down into the sediment bowl, which goes to the valve and then down to the carburetor. So I opened the sediment bowl and I opened the valve to the front tank and nothing happened. The front tank is completely clogged. I looked in there it's full of sludge and stuff. It needs to be completely cleaned out. But what's curious to me is why the sediment bowl appears to have perfectly clear uh, fuel in it, but it is below the tank with all that red stuff in it. So that's a curiosity. I don't know what's going on there. The only thing I do know is that we can't use this front tank at all yet because it's plugged up. So we're gonna have to do everything off the rear tank but the rear tank is clean and fuel is flowing freely all the way to the carburetor. So at least we got this one to work with uh, for now. All right, let's check the engine oil. Yeah, 
Well, the engine oil actually looks pretty good, luckily. All right, just for fun, let's see what's in this toolbox. Well, that was kind of like a clown car. Stuff just kept coming and kept coming. Unfortunately, it's just all junk for the most part. Any of you John Deere experts out there know if this is a John Deere wrench? I don't know if it is or not. The only thing I'm gonna put back is the hammer, that wrench, and the pliers. The inside top of the radiator is all crusty and dry. And I can't see any coolant from the top. But like I said earlier, there is some coolant in there because it's leaking down there at that hose that's bulging out. We're not gonna mess with that for now. We're gonna try to get it started first. If it fires off, then we'll uh, come back and address the coolant. So my game plan at this point is to replace the battery cable between the starter and the solenoid and the uh, positive battery cable that goes from the battery to the solenoid. They've got a starter button wired into the dash right here. And on the back of it, the wire looks a little bit suspect. So uh, I think we'll just leave it as is and see if it works. If it does, then fine. We can uh, worry about that later. If it doesn't, then we'll, we'll replace that wire as well. So as long as I'm going to the store to get those two battery cables, I think I'll also pick up a new fan belt because like I said, I think that's gonna break and fly off the second this thing starts running. I did put a new fan belt on it and I just went down to Tractor Supply and found a 29 inch half inch belt and it seems to fit perfectly. I also put a new cable between the starter and the solenoid and I also installed a new positive battery cable. This one goes down to the solenoid as well. Now look at the positive cable that I removed from the tractor. I think this might be the worst one I've ever seen. This too is a bit of a curiosity. Why would somebody go to the trouble of putting a brand new starter on it and not replace this cable? Anyway, enough said. I'm gonna get a six volt battery. We're gonna hook up the system. I'm gonna put a little bit more fresh fuel in the rear tank. And first of all, we're gonna see if the starter will spin the motor with these new cables. There might be something wrong with the rest of the wiring or the solenoid, we don't know yet. If the starter does spin the motor, Maybe we can get it to fire off. I've got a little bit more fresh gas added to the gasoline tank. Got the battery hooked up. I went to push the starter button here and nothing happened. So there's a larger issue with the ignition system. But we're going to see if I can just jump the starter straight from the battery and maybe we can get it to turn that way. Well, that's something. It sounds like we're getting compression. We just needed to fire off once. All right, so we know we're getting fuel to the carburetor, maybe even too much because it's leaking. Um, so the only unknown left is if we're getting spark or not. So let's go ahead and pull these spark plugs and uh, see what's going on there. Well, here's the spark plug on the left side of the tractor. It looks like it's a Champion D23. It's old, but it doesn't look super terrible. But the other one is stuck in the engine and uh, it's so corroded that the tip broke off on the other side there. So I'm gonna have to remove this bracket and uh, spend some more time on that other spark plug getting it out. 
without breaking it off. And then we'll go ahead and put new plugs in and then we have to check spark after that. This plug appears to be stuck. I can't get it with a wrench. So I need to remove this bracket here so I can get a socket on it and get more leverage. I need to go remove the other side then. I should be able to twist it up and out of the way. Wow, she's really in there. That's not good. I hope it didn't get cross-threaded or something like that. All right, I think I finally got it. Well, the threads are a little rounded, but they're not bad. I think it was just rust and corrosion that was uh, preventing it from coming out. So the plugs that came out of the tractor were Champion D23s. I did a little research and it seems like a popular plug for these tractors is the uh, Autolite 3116. My local uh, store didn't have those in stock, so I just got these cheapy NGKs. These are NGK AB6. Uh, we'll, we'll try these. If these work, then fine. If not, then I'll have to order some uh, auto lights. I'm going to put a little anti-seize on the threads. All right, I've got both spark plugs in. Now I'm going to check spark by rotating the engine by hand. We'll listen for the magneto click and watch the spark tester. If we get spark, then we'll move on to uh, trying to start it again. If we don't get sparked, then we're gonna have to go into the magneto and probably clean the points at the very least. This tractor has uh, stranded spark plug wires on it. And these aren't the best to use with magnetos. It's best to use uh, spark plug wires with a solid copper core. These will probably work, but they say that the solid copper core uh, is better. You'll get a hotter spark using those. But for the meantime, I'm just gonna clamp this wire to my tester and that should suffice to see if we have spark or not all right keep your eyes right there all right let's see if we get anything over here uh, well i didn't see anything so we're gonna have to uh, go into the magneto. I'm just gonna put a dot on the upper wire there so I know which one was in which position. Well, I went to pull the wires out of the cap and I couldn't get them out. So they must be stuck in there as well. So we'll just leave them in there for the, for the moment. I'll uh, deal with that later. The contacts are all corroded down in there. Oh wow, see that? Somebody jammed a piece of paper in there to keep the rotor on. To be honest, the points don't look all that bad. I mean, yeah, they could be cleaned, but they're not what I was expecting. Um, let me rotate the engine just to make sure they're opening and closing, and then we'll clean those and address these uh, contacts in the cap here. Well, they're opening and closing, but that is a very narrow gap. I mean, just to my eye, that looks like, I don't know, it's hard to say, eight thousandths. All right, the points gap was about six thousandths, and I adjusted them to 15 thousandths. So uh, now I'm just gonna run my little double-sided emery board file a few times <clears throat> over the contacts. All right, I've got the points gapped, cleaned. I got all the rust and corrosion off the end of the uh, shaft and I cleaned up the rotor also. Uh, besides the, uh, the ends being worn down a little bit, I don't know if you can see, but one of the tangs in there is missing. 
that silver part there's a tang on the left side but the one on the right side is missing i think it should still work just with that one so we're going to reinstall it and see what happens i've also cleaned the plug wires i cleaned out the inside of the cap where the contacts are and the rotor and the spring i go ahead and get it all installed and we'll check for spark one more time all right here we go again fingers crossed Oh, baby, did you see it? All right, here we go. Yeah, we're in business. I'm gonna put some distilled water into the radiator just in case it does fire up, then we can let it run for a while. Well, I don't know what the system capacity is for coolant, but it took about two gallons. I put a gallon of distilled water, then I put some uh, coolant in on top of that, and it's up to the full mark. All right, we're ready to try to fire it again. This time I'm using a 12 volt battery to uh, jump the starter. It's not gonna hurt it. And uh, hopefully she'll fire off and uh, we'll get to see how this thing sounds. I do have my fire extinguisher standing by. Well, it sounds like it's trying to run, but it almost sounds like it's choking itself off and we're getting a lot of gasoline out the compression valve. So I'm gonna remove this elbow here and uh, we're gonna try it again. Well, I've just got it loose here. So at least we know we're getting air into the system now. It could be clogged up there, uh, but it's awfully wet in there with fuel so there's a good possibility that something's wrong with the carburetor and it's not working right um, I don't know at this point but I'm gonna hit it with some starting fluid we're gonna try this again and see if we can get it to run just for a little bit and we'll go from there Yeah, look at this see how much gas is pouring out of there yeah something's wrong with the carburetor so i think that is our issue at this point i'm going to try this one more time with the starting fluid then we'll wrap this up Well guys, I think that's all I'm gonna get out of it in this condition. I just can't keep it running because of that carburetor. I turned the fuel back on just to show you how bad this carburetor is. You know, we're getting really good flow from the tank, but it's just completely overflowing. The float isn't working at all. It's coming right out the end. So that's why I can't keep the engine running. But the good news is the motor sounds pretty good to me. Sounds like it's got good compression and it was popping off like a John Deere does. So at the very least, we're gonna need a carburetor kit and I'm gonna to have to rig up some type of a starter switch up here on the dash. This button just isn't doing anything and the wiring behind there is all just roached out and rusted. I don't think it would hurt to get a new rotor too because that one was quite worn. And I think I'll also get some solid copper core spark plug wires and probably some better quality spark plugs as long as we're doing that. Once I get all that done, we'll be able to uh, start it again and keep it running. And then we'll check the transmission and the brakes and the PTO and uh, everything else. 
I was hoping I was gonna get to drive this today, but I will still take this as a successful day. It was a little bit of work, but uh, I accomplished my goal of getting it started for the first time. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you tune in for the uh, upcoming videos on this tractor. There will probably be several more to come before we get this to uh, back to operational condition. And when that happens, we'll have to decide what we wanna do with it then. Is this something I wanna restore? or just leave the patina on it. I hope to see you guys on the next video. Take care.